we shall now discuss about Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law in <laughs> electrostatics. In electrostatics. See, uh, this Coulomb's law, what does it mean? We know that light charges, what do they do? They repel, they repel each other. And on light charges, they attract. attract each other with some forces, right? Mm -hmm. So using Coulomb's law, we will know like how much force of repulsion is present or how much force of attraction is present between any two charges, okay? So Coulomb's law gives the magnitude and the direction of the force that is present in between two charges. Okay? All right. Now, Coulomb says that, okay, two charged particles, let's say, let us consider point charges only. Just point charges. Let's say Q1 is one charge. Q2 is another charge. Okay? So, Coulomb says that Two charged particles, they will either attract each other if they are on light charges or they will repel each other if they are light charges, right? So two point charges, they will either attract each other or they will repel each other with some force. And that force is found to be directly proportional to the product of the two charges but only magnitude ah. it is positive charge is equal to plus psi bodo it is negative charge will be minus psi bodo will be given positive negative to consider we will consider only the magnitude okay so two point charges they will either attract each other they will repel each other with some force and that force is found to be directly proportional to the product of magnitude of the two charges. All right? And it is also found to be, this force is also found to be inversely proportional to the square of the distance joining them. Suppose the distance between the two charges is R. R is the distance of separation of the two charges, okay? Are you getting me? The two charges are separated by a distance R. So the force of attraction or repulsion is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the charges. This law is known as inverse square law. Gravitation, DB, the force of gravitation, okay, the gravitational force, is also inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two bodies, right? Mm. That's an inverse square law. So this is also an inverse square law, okay? Mm. Now, combining the above two factors, we have F will be proportional to Q1, Q2 upon R squared. Now, this proportionality, if you convert to equals, we have a constant here, we write k as constant, we will know what is k. So k times q1, q2 upon r squared. The value of k is also found to be 1 by 4 pi epsilon. This symbol is called epsilon, Greek letter. Where this epsilon node is called permittivity. 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 Permittivity of free space. Very interesting this one. I will explain. Permittivity of free space. Okay? The value of k is 1 by 4 pi epsilon. It's found to be this. Q1, Q2 by r squared. For now, you need not require the value of e naught. You don't need uh, the value of permittivity now. So 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught overall, overall is found to be 9 into 10 to the power 9. What will be the unit? What will be the unit? Force to ideas, no? Tell I unit to kill what? Force means Newton. R squared if I like 
middle square, column, column, me chit a go, third column square. Right? Yeah. Big column, big column, 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 column square, me chit a go, no. So this is the value of that proportionality constant k, which is also known as, which is found to be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, and its value is 9 into 10 to the power 9 newton meter square per column square. Alright? Any confusion? Lord, what do you say? Yeah, the, the value of k, which is also known as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. K do it we as a itu la value do manai. Yeah. Okay, 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 log you relax here. F is equal to k q1 q2 by r square, right? I want to find the unit of k. So I can just cross multiply f times r square equal to k times q1 q2 right so f times r square upon q1 q2 is k f force is newton r square meter so meter square q1 means coulomb q2 is also coulomb so newton meter square upon coulomb square so newton meter square per coulomb square that's k all right okay now primitivity of free space you do know the word itself is confusing. Permittivity. What is this permittivity? Permittivity means the medium is allowing, is permitting. Permittivity means a mechan tawadu. When we think about permittivity, it's permitting the two charges to interact. Or is it not? In a life, obviously, no? Permittivity ko adan de. See, these two charges are going to be placed in some medium. Now. So in some medium, so there is going to be a force in between the two charges. So permittivity means the medium is allowing the force to interact. That is how we are thinking, right? Yes. But that is not the case. That is not the case. Okay. Yes. I will say that if permittivity increases, force decreases. I will say that. Why? Permittivity like uh, is like if uh, is like uh, something like this. Suppose uh, there is in a suppose let's consider a movie. In that movie, there is a villain. Villain. His name is Joseph. Joseph means we think that okay, he will do good work. <laughs> he will help people. No. But if he's William, even though he has a good name, Joseph, he's never going to do good to others, right? William, in a permittivity. Permittivity, the word itself means permittivity, so permit, well, it, it's permitting the two charges to interact. Force, force, type of the other. Permittivity means why I permit Kurese. Why did you permit Kurese? Tai laga nijor laga field laga permit kurese ni. Tai nijor laga medium ke permit kurese ni ki go and break that force. Don't let them interact. Are you getting me? Permittivity means okay, it's permitting. Permittivity, so it's permit. But it is not permitting those two charges to interact. It's permitting its medium. Okay? The part, it's permitting its own field. Same telling to its particles. No? Medium means it has particles. So, Thai laga particles ki kwasini go and break that force. Don't let them interact with each other. That's permittivity here. Are you getting me? Yes. So, when we talk about the medium, we have so many particles in a medium. There is also a medium. It has so many particles. You are placing the two charges, Q1 and Q2 here. There is a force of attraction or repulsion between them. The two charges are interacting very nicely. 
but now the permittivity is same. Okay, go. My particles go and break that interaction. So as these particles go and start to interact with this force now, the force will decrease now. Force will decrease, so the force of interaction between these two charges will decrease. Because permittivity is permitting its own field to interact here. particles link to time may be chain to time may be force to time may be is it okay yes so column slow though force though the force of interaction it completely depends on the medium in vacuum in vacuum what happens in vacuum there is no particles so when the two charges are interacting with each other with some force or it can be this force, right? So when the two particles are interacting in vacuum, permittivity is zero. Because there is no particle in a vacuum, right? Vacuum could go, there is it's space, empty space. So there are no particles present in this medium to go and interact. Okay, with that force. So the force will be maximum in free space. That is why E naught is permittivity of free space. Is it okay? But if you are taking the two charges in any medium, then instead of E naught, you have to replace by E. Where E is the permittivity of that medium. But when you're thinking about the vacuum, when you're placing the charges in vacuum, then permittivity has nothing to do now. Permittivity cannot interact with that force between the charges. In the time, permittivity is considered to be epsilon naught. Permittivity of free space. Are you following that permittivity? Yeah. So that's all about permittivity. <laughs> now, as we know, already know about the Coulomb's law here, now we are going to study very uh, important relation. Coulomb's law, Coulomb's law, same, uh, but. Sir, yeah. One question <laughs> about permittivity. <laughs> That means, according to what you said, if permittivity is lower, that means the force of interaction will, will be more. Yeah. Permittivity. Permittivity is low means more force. That's what I said. Mm. And I studied permittivity. Mm. If permittivity is high, the force will decrease. Is it okay? Mm. Yeah. So, we're going to study Coulomb's law, but this time in <coughs> vector force. Vector form means we will know in which direction the force will act. Is it okay? Yes. Uh, then you need to remember uh, some vectors, some concept of vectors. We have studied in class 11, I got it. So we will do some vectors. Mm -hmm. You need to know about uh, the unit vector. Unit vector is a vector which represents direction, but magnitude 1, okay? Suppose you have a three-dimensional coordinate axis. So the direction of the x-axis is represented by a unit vector, i cap. The direction of the y-axis is represented by another unit vector, j cap. And the direction of the z-axis is represented by another vector, k cap. Okay? Yes. So unit vector is a vector of magnitude 1 which represents direction. So we have to use that concept. Column slow vector form. Okay, I'm going to do like this. Consider two point charges, but like charges. Two point like charges. Okay. I'm going to take two like charges. Point, point charge, point like charges. Q1 and Q2, Q1 and Q2 placed at points, placed at points A and B respectively, respectively, right? Separated, separated by a distance R, separated by a distance R. So I'm considering two point charges, like charges, 
Q1 and Q2. Okay. Two light charges, Q1 and Q2, right? Where are they placed? At points A and B respectively. Separated by a distance. Alright. Now, since they are like charges, there will be a force of repulsion. So, there will be a force acting on Q1 due to Q2, right? Q2 will exert a force on O. Q2 will exert a force of repulsion on Q1. That force will act along this direction. Let me denote this force by vector. It has direction, though. No? So, vector F1, 2. F1 means force on Q1 because of Q2. And there will be another force acting on Q2 due to Q1. And that force will act in this direction. So it has direction F2. Force on second charge due to first charge. So let me write that. Let F12 be a force on Q1 due to Q2 and F21 be a force on Q2 due to Q1. Alright. According to Coulomb's law, magnitude of the force. Okay, I mean direction in the Coulomb, pardon me. Magnitude of the force will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into q1 q2 by r squared. Magnitude now. Same, same for f21 though now. This is equal to f21. Magnitude for the direction. Same here though. Magnitude the same over though. Right? Now direction is subtly equivalent. See. f12 is acting in this direction. f21 is acting in that direction. In order to represent those directions, we need a union vector. You can take any kind of unit vector you like. I can take IG. Let I cap, let I cap be a unit vector from Q1 to Q2, going from Q1 to Q2. And let J cap be a unit vector going from Q2 to Q1. So whenever I write force vector F12, now so vector F12 force is represented by which unit vector? Its direction. The direction of this force is represented by which unit vector? J cap. And the direction of this force is represented by which unit vector? I cap. So I'm going to write the force in vector form. So in that case, in that case, your vector F12 will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into Q. Primitive bit of free space, okay? More force. Into Q1, Q2 by R square with unit vector, with unit vector, J cap. With unit vector, J cap. <coughs> and F21 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into Q1, Q2 upon R square. Right? Where I cap is a unit vector representing this direction. J cap is a unit vector representing this direction. Equation 1, equation 2. This was equation star. Okay? Now, my first are getting right away. Now you see, I cap is equal to J cap. Because they have same magnitude, right? Unit vector will have magnitude one over them. I B J B will be minus the whole again. Remember, because they have opposite direction, right? Yes. Now from one or from two, any one you like, from two. From two, your F21 is equal to one by four by epsilon naught into Q1, Q2 by R square. I cap, right? I cap can be replaced by 
minus j cap, right? I can rearrange this negative sign and bring it here. So that's 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught into q1 q2 upon r square with j cap. What is this? What is this? What is this? Leave out negative sign. That's one two. Yeah, that's negative of f1. So which proves Coulomb's law in vector form? Okay? okay. That means when two light charges are interacting, <coughs> the forces between them are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. So question can be asked, prove Coulomb's law in vector form. Two marks, not more than that. Or we can simply ask, prove that vector f12 is equal to minus of vector f21 or reversed it can be reversed where where what symbols symbols have their yeah have their usual name two marks is it okay very well cool is both vector column slow in uh for magnitude and for vector form also I'll drop this out okay, because I want you to try without looking.